Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Fadi Gandur. Uh, I have been doing uh, a series on leadership in crisis, specifically now in when we had the biggest crisis of them all uh, with, uh, with the Corona, COVID-19. Uh, I am talking to leaders, uh, entrepreneurs, uh, people of influence who have ha handled themselves during crisis. What did they do? How did they do it? How did they react? How do they work with their own people? How do they keep their companies uh, alive and kicking and uh, inspired to continue to do stuff despite the crisis? And today I am uh, extremely happy to have my good friend, uh, Rolando Mchahwar uh, from uh, Souk, founder of Souk, co-founder of Souk, now CEO of Amazon, I'll call it CEO, vice president of Amazon in, in the Middle East. Ronaldo, uh, fantastic to have you here. Thank you so much. Hi, Fadi. How are you? Good. Thank you for having me. Good. A pleasure. Uh, we, you and I go a long way. I'm pretty sure you've gone through so many crises, especially that you come from Syria, you come from Aleppo. Uh, you have your own uh, uh, frame of mind of thinking of crisis and relevance of what crisis means. Uh, but we want to talk now and start with, with this current crisis, uh, which seems to be taking forever. Uh, Take me through your mindset as you were starting to feel uh, that there is a crisis, uh, March, maybe, maybe February. Uh, what did you do? What, what, what was the reaction? How, where did uh, Amazon come globally with a discussion with you? How did you react locally? T tell me that story, that frame of mind of, of where, what you went through and what your team went through. So thank you. Uh Definitely, this crisis has taught us a lot. Uh, my first mental model is hopefully we come out of it better than we went into it, regardless how bad it is. So there's a lot of learnings within this crisis. And I'm always evaluating when we come out of this, whenever this thing ends, however it ends, that we as a team and a company uh, and people and hopefully society were better off than we went in. That's kind of the overall arcing mental model and everything we do, how does it play out later? I think February is when we started being a bit more cautious about travel. Fast forward a bit into March, obviously this became a global pandemic uh, and Amazon and like all companies uh, quickly prioritize initially the safety of how our teams and how we work. Uh, so the first mandate uh, came, you know, we all kind of agreed like, hey, uh, start working from home. Uh, initially, I think it was till May or June, and now it's till October. And I foresee some things may go all the way to the end of the year. Some global tech companies already announced that they'll, you can stay home till the end of the year. And that was kind of strange because... A, my management style, uh, I always rally my team, rally the troops. Um, I feel I get a lot of mental and emotional feedback from being in meetings with my team. At the same time, uh, luckily we as Amazon and in the region, we are already working with multiple teams in multiple countries. So working remotely with the Egyptian team or the team in Amman or my team in Saudi or even Seattle in Europe is not new to us. So luckily we have the cadence of meetings and how we run them when we have remote participants. But suddenly to lose everyone and work from home uh, was, uh, was a bit of a checkpoint. Obviously, working remotely changes the way you structure your team. So the things that I think worked for us is, you know, our managers were over-communicating with their teams. Uh, we created, so that was one. You're, you're not getting the same... Cadence. What does, sorry to interrupt, uh, Ronnie, what, what does over-communicating? So why is it essential that you over-communicate? Yeah, so I think you, you don't want to leave people on the edge. Uh, you want to make sure everyone understands what we're going through. Uh, I told, for example, my teams, hey, set up these uh, chat groups on our internal chat where you and your functional team make sure you're, you're just touching base constantly throughout the day. How was the productivity of people working from home? I mean, that's, that's such well, a... I think how did people react? Yeah, initially, it was, let's, okay, you own this, you own this, you own this. So once you decide what each one owns... Uh, 
I think in my view on the way we run our business, productivity was just as good and maybe even a bit better because people are super focused on managing what we had to manage. Uh, my always worry was, what's the impact long-term on innovation and creativity when you don't have all these interaction and hallway ideas and these meetings when people brainstorm loudly, uh, where people exchange ideas more a bit freely. I think that's, that's where I was more worried about. I think everything in flight, example, we launched Saudi uh, in, in July, totally remote. I mean, we've never done a country launch as remote as we've done the Saudi launch. But because it was an in-flight project, all the objectives were kind of laid out. It still was, a, we were able as a team to manage it using the remote tools that we have, the Zooms of the world. Amazon has a system called Chime. You know, multiple companies have different systems. I mean, look, you were an essential uh, uh, services company. So you had last mile people, high, highly, uh, uh, dangerous uh, uh, jobs that these frontliners were doing. I mean, how, how did you communicate with the frontliners? How did you keep them from being worried? I mean, because, I mean, they're, they're as worried as you are or much more worried about their own safety. I mean, that must have been a big, big job. Yeah, I think, look, um, there was a statement that Jeff used and I think it, it really fits well in this crisis. We really, I, I personally felt that we, in a way, we're obligated or it's critical for us to use our innovation to continue, as you said, become essential to our customers. Every order delivered almost uh, substitutes a person going out and stay at home kind of became kind of our mission. Like, hey, we want to drive more people to stay at home by making our service available, by making more consumable and important products, priority products available to customers, really pushing hard. So it was kind of our mission to continue to do that. But just said something like when something bad like this happens, you know, you can make it define you, you can make it destroy you, you can make it strengthen you. So I think we all felt the essence that this is really our mission that you know, we're in this place, Amazon has all this technology and innovation. By the way, not only in product delivery, AWS played a massive role in home learning. I know in Jordan, in multiple countries, we work with many ministries to, to try to get this home, home education infrastructure up very quickly for the countries that didn't have such infrastructure. So we play the role, I think our innovation as a company, we're blessed to be in a situation where our engineers and tech and ability to create and use our systems at scale and the talented people that we have to be put to use to this mission. So stay at home became a mission. It's important for us to deliver. And we felt the responsibility. I felt the responsibility that not delivering Meaning maybe, uh, on the other hand, someone goes out. Priority, really, safety is a priority at all costs, especially our teams and the people that are on the front line. And then we communicated with them. I actually personally went to the FCs multiple times to make sure we understand, we observe, we see. It's one thing to get an audit report of social distancing. is another to go and see the hotspots that you have and how you can tackle. It's important that you show your face also and, and be there. So that's we're all in this together. Yeah. People. I mean, there was a problem with supply, obviously, as you said earlier, and all all e-commerce yeah. businesses had supply problems because coming from China, no more air, airplanes. Uh, the, the the supply uh, chains were all disrupted. There were backlogs. I mean, all these issues were were needed immediate attention. Uh, immediate solutions and then handling the clients who are always, you know, uh, clients will always complain. They, the clients still thought that uh, uh, you needed to deliver the packages just like you did before the crisis, right? You know, we have a, a prime program, right? And for us, a prime member is the pinnacle customer. And we tried super hard for these customers who are members with us to make sure that within a day or two, most of their orders were delivered. We kept a very high bar on that program. But to your point, you have extra demand. You have stuff that's coming in that may be as important or not. Luckily, in our business, we have a lot of data. And we just had to really understand from the data what matters to our customer. It wasn't only like, I want to deliver to you water and food because you survive. What mattered to customers was, as I said, maybe a bigger set like masks, like the sanitization. They really wanted that stuff in. And then we work backward with vendors to figure out what they have and what they don't have. What are substituted products that we can bring in? 
what is if we had a global capacity of any sort what are the key things that we want to bring in versus bringing things like chairs or tables or things we are not going to ship anyway to customers and we lean down the couriers some of the extra you know third party warehousing to store some of the non important stuff and we worked very hard to prioritize and what we prioritize on the side for a prime and a non prime member became our core mission is let's make sure it's fast so customers if it's a priority for them this means they want it and we work backwards you know from what the customers wanted how fast we can deliver them how we prioritize them and make sure that you know we're meeting expectation on the majority of the products you were really specifically in the lockdowns that you were you as as a, as a digital uh, service provider and, and uh, you were the uh, company or one of the companies that kept the world supplied and connected and uh, i think I mean, it was a mission yeah i think keeping people home became like our priority in, in a way our mission internally and with that uh, we had to do whatever it takes sometimes let me take this a little bit personal uh, ronnie did you tell me about your your day during the lockdowns what 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 happens i mean i Uh, uh, from from the minute you you wake up and uh, and take me through a typical yeah. if there is a typical day as such <laughs> so a typical day used to start with let me open my laptop see what emails and what changed the world what last time? what time did you what time do you start <laughs> start at 6 7 um, and usually because seattle is behind us kind of getting updated on the protocols and changes that are taking place and what we are deciding that is critical to us in terms of employee working or some of our operational procedures which mainly are around safety were probably the first update um i think after a while you you discover right away like okay i'm not moving enough if i don't take care of myself i'm going to probably my health is going to deteriorate and i think within two weeks i'm like okay this cadence need to change I got to start figuring out how to work out so I had you know obviously the gyms have stopped uh and no pools and whatever so any activity you underestimate how much you move a day right on a given day without doing anything you move 9000 8000 steps did you feel you were working longer hours were you more, more efficient I, I think uh, this just because of the demand the demanding nature of the crisis definitely uh you know you had to put in more uh because you're just dealing with so many new things on a daily basis so many unknowns and uh you just had to really focus and if if the work we're doing and our customers depend on us to continue to deliver products you need to prioritize that mission and in an essence yes you end up working more i did get into a cadence that one day a week i want to stop like at 6 p.m. your day was what 12 hours 14 hours right a normal day started six as i said maybe an hour gym so let's say 7 7:30 it easily would go to 9 10 easily 9, 10. You, you lost control of time right you wouldn't know I, what time we step back after a while we told team be mindful of working hours people are available but they also have a family home other things that they want to do tell me what what lessons do we take from from this lockdown to this crisis what do we take going forward uh, i mean so uh, uh, just to clarify a bit so uh, working from home dealing with people working with teams what what did you learn what what lessons do we draw out of this yeah, i mean i i as as an employee i'm just putting myself again working backwards from my team like we do work backwards from customers i believe many people have found working from home to be productive and in many ways give them more freedom and i think you just have seems like you have more time at your hand because you're wasting less time traveling to a meeting and i believe employees post crisis will come back and say i like that setup i want to continue some people for some people it's not ideal and they would say with the environment i have at home with the family kids schooling i'm not comfortable working on but i do believe there is a signal that has been set and a precedent that employees can be productive we can engage them and people can work in this environment which changes your outlook on really do we need to sign a new lease now or things are going to look differently as we're growing so and when you when you give people the option i mean uh, do you think you'll say 
evaluate it. I believe there, there's, I mean, we obviously, I, I, as I said, I miss interacting with my team. I believe there are the social clues and some feelings and emotional signals that you get from your teams and meetings that help you maybe also frame a different, maybe one is qualitative, one is quantitative uh, measures as you're making your decision. There's that subliminal feedback that you get about, ah, this guy was upset, I take it back. Why was he upset? Maybe let me review what he said. Let me think about what, what, what his point of view. Maybe on these calls you lose those. So I don't know the impact on long-term innovation, but definitely I think there are clearly functions where people are more comfortable doing what they're doing. They're going to come back to say to us, I've done this in crisis. I can definitely handle this in normal time. And I think companies will have to evaluate again uh, as we work with prioritizing what our customers want backwards, we have to also prioritize the talent and the innovation and the team and what they bring to the table. And if that's going to be a theme and they've been able to prove that they're able to do it, maybe not come to the office every day, maybe have these big meetings that we need everyone around uh, once or twice a week. But then other than that, give people more flexibility. I think it's just going to happen. And because there's also a sense of, you know, you want to attract the best talent and the best talent is telling you, this is the way I'm comfortable uh, producing. This is the balance that I want. Um, I'm still judging, is it better for my life work balance? Because as you said, if you continue this continuation of working from home, when do you really break? And I haven't yet assessed that myself. I'm, I'm seeing, does that take a toll on me? I myself, uh, you know, after Amazon allowed a portion of our teams to go back to work, do go to the office once a week. I had a worse CEO mindset. This is a bit of a different where, you know, it's a real, real crisis. Um, but it's fulfilling to see your team able to deliver, obviously, the promise to customers and continue to uphold our customers and what we promised them and their opinion of our service high. We can't keep everyone happy. It's not that easy. Obviously, we have to make trade-offs. But for me personally, while I would not want to go through this maybe again anytime soon, I do feel you come out of it as a better manager. You've learned how to you know, really listen to your people. We rallied the team around. So, and, you know, I can't be, I'm super proud of the guys who you know, helped us go through this. Do you feel that there was more bonding? Uh, did you bond I together? Think, was think, that well, sense? You know, I think this whole about like, you know, our customers depend on us to continue to deliver important essential goods is quite a strong, like depend. Right? It's not a choice. In the past, I think customers have a choice and they're a click away or a trip away. It's a bit different here where you say, you know, they depend on me to for the kid to get the education, I have to deliver this tablet or iPad to him. For the person to stay healthy, I need to get this gym mat to him. For the house to stay clean, I need to get the sanitizers to them. For the people to be safe, we gotta figure out how to get millions of masks to customers and make it super affordable and make sure no one is raising prices on us and continue that in check so people don't take advantage of the crisis. Unfortunately, there are people who try to do that, but you know, we tried super hard to make sure that doesn't happen. When you look back and you say, wow, that was like quite like a seven White Fridays in one or something like that. We usually rally around White Friday because it's a brand that we created as a shopping event in the region. This was a bit more important because like the word depend is quite, uh, I think, strong. If you understand what the word depend is and trust means, right? Being reliable, being available, um, being honest with customers, especially on prices and things. We, we, I, when you look at the, the definition, if you go to Wikipedia, go look at the word trust, you get this reliability, dependability, and honesty. And then you work backwards from those with the Amazon goals of proprietorizing uh, you know, your customer obsession and safety. Uh, I think it's just a phenomenal mission, the way you look at it. Fantastic, Ronnie. With this, uh, really, it's a, it's a perfect conclusion to our discussion. Uh, this is really fascinating. Thank you so much for giving us the time.